say hello to HoloLens 2. Now, these are the smallest and most power-efficient 2K displays in existence. Now, they allow us to dramatically grow immersion while shrinking the size of the displays. But immersion is about more than just the holograms we place in the world. Immersion is also about how you interact with them. HoloLens 2 adapts to you. It adapts to your hands and goes beyond the gestures to give you the satisfaction of direct manipulation, letting you experience what it feels like for the first time to actually touch a hologram. To top it off, HoloLens 2 now also understands precisely where you are looking, enabling us to do things like understanding your intent and adapting the holograms in real time to your eyes. Then using the same cameras, we've enabled Windows Hello, iris-based biometric authentication the most secure and reliable enterprise-grade solution. We optimized HoloLens 2 for long wear and comfort. Keeping with Microsoft's tradition of inclusive design, we 3D scans the heads of thousands of people across a wide range of ages, genders, and ethnicities. And we then use this data to create a device that once again sets the highest bar for both ergonomics as well as comfort. HoloLens 2 has a universal fit system that works on the broadest a most diverse range of people, whether you wear glasses or not. Putting it on should be as simple as putting on your favorite hat. We reduced the weight of HoloLens 2 by making the front enclosure entirely out of carbon fiber, making it light and durable in a device that is ready for the modern workplace. And we also fundamentally changed how that weight is distributed, making you feel as if the device is floating on your head. Now, as a result of these and hundreds of other changes, I'm incredibly proud that with HoloLens 2, we more than triple the comfort of the device. HoloLens 2 sets a new standard for comfort in mixed reality headsets. Now, the list of innovations in HoloLens 2 goes on and on. But instead of telling you about it, why don't we show you? Now, as Alex mentioned, HoloLens 2 is very comfortable. It fits just like a hat. And the only thing that's even more effortless is how I'm automatically signed in. With Windows Hello and RS authentication, the HoloLens 2 is actually signing me in as I put on my device. Now, not only does the HoloLens 2 recognize me, it also recognizes my hands. Look at this, fully articulated hand tracking. And as I move my hands around, the HoloLens 2 is actually calibrating to my unique hand size. And of course, not only does the HoloLens 2 recognize me and my hands, it also recognizes the world. Welcome to my mixed reality home. This is the place where I have all the apps and content that I use every day. Let's check some of them out. Now, I've seen many people put on HoloLens for the first time, and the first thing people do when they put on the device is they reach out their hands and try and touch the holograms. And now, you can. 
Look at the way that the holograms are spawning to my hand, almost inviting me to touch it. And in fact, I can just grab this corn to resize it. Or I can rotate it. Or move it. That's right. We are touching holograms. This is an app I've got called Spatial. Let me just put it right there. I've got another app here called Vuforia View. Now, it's a little big, so let me just use two hands here to make it smaller, and then rotate it so you can see. There we go. And then let me put it down here in your spatial, maybe make it a bit smaller. Yeah, that's nice. All right, now let's switch gears and talk about a different kind of application. I've got a browser over there, but it's kind of far away, and I don't really want to walk over there, so let me just call it over with my voice. Follow me. This is a browser that's running Microsoft Teams, which is a tool that we use back home to collaborate. Let me see what the team's been working on. OK, so it looks like they've got a surprise for me in the Playground app. I just have to say the words show surprise. All right, so let me just open up that Start menu here, and then place the app, and then launch it. So now we're actually exiting my mixed reality home and going into an immersive experience. But notice that that browser that I had actually followed me in. Now, this can actually be really useful when you have things like emails or PDFs that you need to reference while you're doing your work. I don't really want it following me around, though, while I'm showing you all this cool stuff. So let me just put it over here, and then we'll get back to it later. Welcome to the playground. We spent years exploring and refining interactions for HoloLens 2. And the playground is just a tiny sampling of the many prototypes that we built, tested, and learned from. Our approach is basically to try out as many things as we could and look for the things that stood out. So for example, here I've got three sliders. Each of them is controlling this wind farm simulation, but each in a different way, using a different interaction technique. One of the things we tried is this touch slider here. So here I can just stick my finger in the slider and have it go to a particular value to control that wind speed there. It felt OK. We also tried this push slider. So this guy I can kind of nudge from side to side, kind of like an abacus, which was interesting. Now, the interaction that really took home the cake, though, was this pinch slider. The way that works is you just pinch it and move it wherever you want. And what we found was that people really liked that tactile sensation of their fingers touching as they grabbed and then released. And across the board, for all interactions, the audio and visual feedback as you grab, move, and then release were all really critical for making this experience feel connected. Oh, this is just so satisfying. I can't wait for you all to try this out. All right, now let's move on to a different kind of control. Buttons. How do you press buttons on HoloLens 2? Well, you just reach out and press them. Now, one interesting thing that we found about buttons was that the size of the buttons actually impacted the way that people interacted with them. So for example, for the smaller one, most people would use one or maybe two fingers. But for the larger one, pretty much everyone used their entire hand. And this is kind of interesting when you think about it, because these objects don't really weigh anything. They're just digital things. But Despite that, people would treat them like real things, almost as if the bigger one had more weight. I just love the way these move and the sounds they play when I press them. It's great. All right, how about something that uses all 10 fingers? Well, to test that out, we built a piano. So here I can just play a chord, or I can play the keys one at a time. All right, so where's that surprise that the team had for me? Oh, that's right, I had to say those words. Uh, show surprise. Ooh, look at that hummingbird over there, it's gorgeous. I wonder if it will fly to my hand. Yeah, oh wow, this is beautiful. I just love the way that it's following my hand around. I've gotta tell the team, they've done a great job. And in fact, I don't even need to use my hands to do this because I can use my eyes and my voice. That's right. HoloLens 2 has eye tracking. So I could just look over to this browser here and look at the bottom of the screen to scroll it, and then send my message. Start dictation. The hummingbird looks great, exclamation mark. Send. So this is what we mean by instinctual interaction. By combining our hands, our eyes, and our voice, HoloLens 2 works in a more human way. Today, companies tackling the world's biggest problems are increasingly spread across the world, and the HoloLens lets us work together as if we were standing next to each other face to face. To show you how that works, let me just flip into spatial here with my HoloLens 2 and materialize the room. 
Hi, Jenna. Hi, Anand. Hey, everyone. It's great to be here on stage holographically. It's great to have you here, Jenna. Can you tell everybody a little bit about what you're seeing? Sure. I can see your lifelike avatar, which we generate in seconds from a 2D photo. And we can walk around the stage with spatial audio and use this whole space around us to collaborate as if we're all here together in the same room. Cool. Now, to show you how companies are using Spatial to transform the way they work, let's invite Sven Gurgitz, CTO of the iconic toy brand Mattel, onto the stage. Hey, guys. How awesome is this? So at Mattel, we're undergoing a massive digital transformation. It's touching all aspects of our business. This includes the way that we're using technology to design and to develop our products. Our classic brands like Barbie and Hot Wheels and Fisher-Price, they have diverse teams of designers, engineers, marketers, and manufacturers that are spread all over the world. They can now come together in a spatial project room, reducing the need to travel as, as much to get everybody on the same page. OK, guys, let's come up with a, some ideas for a line of aquatic toys. Yeah. How about sea turtles? Oh, that's really cool. Let's try sharks. That's cool. How about jellyfish? So all we have to do is say the words, and they're instantly visualized right before our eyes. You can even click into one of these bundles, and they expand into a full-blown internet search, complete with 3D models, images, and web pages. Jenna, why don't we click into just the images here so we can get some good inspiration for this uh, new aquatic line? Mm-hmm. Sure. Every object you see in Spatial is physical and tactile. So you can scroll through or pick up images you like and toss them up on the wall with physics. And we don't have to just stick with digital content. I can actually pull up these sketches I did on my phone last night using that same Spatial app. I just pull up those photos and hit Send. And they're instantly transformed into this digital environment. Nice drawings. It's so easy to fill up your room with ideas, so we built this tool to help you quickly organize all these ideas. So let me select all of these, and let's make a grid. Cool. This goes to the wall. Now, this entire room we've created is a persistent digital object that anyone can access or contribute to at any time, whether they're using an AR or VR headset or even a PC or mobile phone. So that's right. Now we can have virtually rich visual rooms that we can keep up uh, for the life of the product. That means no more tearing down war rooms uh, all the time. So Spatial and HoloLens are helping us drive improvements in our digital design and development process, changing the way we create new toys. By bringing people together from all over the world to collaborate in the same virtual room, we're overcoming a natural barrier to our collective success. That's people's desire for direct face-to-face -face interaction when building commitment and trust. We're so excited to see faster time to market and reduced need to travel, as well as the many other benefits that we're going to unleash at Mattel as we collaborate in mixed reality. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Thank you so much, Ben. Now, keeping with the theme of time to value, we have seen HoloLens get used in a variety of different environments. Environments ranging from construction sites to operating rooms to even the International Space Station. And I see lots of different training experiences here. There's the blower one Maria was talking about. Let me go ahead and select it. Now I need to place it on stage. Let's pick center stage and place the big blower. Wow, wow. that's beautiful. So Alex is now viewing the experience that Maria published from Vuforia Studio which includes live IoT data streaming in from an actual blower out in the field. While this experience offers significant benefits from a time and cost of training perspective, thus far it's only been geared for individual participation. But now, let's make it more collaborative. By leveraging the Azure Spatial Anchor Service within Vuforia Studio and Vue, we can let Maria seamlessly join in Alex's experience. Maria can simply take out her iPad and launch Vuforia View. Once Maria points her iPad at the same location where Alex placed the blower, she can participate in the mixed reality experience 
making it far more interactive and collaborative. That's right, Jim. Now that Alex and I can share the same experience, I can create a number of different training scenarios. Alex, let's simulate a gear failure mode. Uh-oh. I see their gear vibration went down, and I have here threshold exceeded. Please inspect. Let's go ahead and select that. Alex, I think you might be dealing with a broken gear tooth. Um, and you will probably have to replace the gear assembly. All right, I'll roll up my sleeves <laughs> and get some work done here. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm ready. Right, I'm going to start the disassembly instructions for the gear assembly. There it is. I see it. Now that Alex is using HoloLens 2, he has access to a wide range of hand and eye tracking capabilities that are all available in Vuforia Studio and Vue. All right, let's put it back. That is so awesome. Fantastic. Vuforia Studio allowed Maria and Howden to create a single mixed reality experience without worrying about which platform it would be viewed on. 